A recent study revealed that testosterone may be the answer to libido problems in women. And Dr. V from Northwestern Specialist for Women is joining us now to break it all mm -hmm. down. Great to see you, Dr. V. Great to see you guys, yeah. too. All right, so let's get to it. The first thing people are going to say, wait, I heard testosterone was not good for women. Right. So testosterone has gone through its cycles over the years. It's the hot topic, it's the one that we mm -hmm. should avoid, it goes back to being the hot topic. And what we've really discovered with testosterone is it needs, to, if, if it is used carefully, under the guise of a doctor, under prescribed testosterone medication, so not all these compounded medications okay. that you can see, that we are able to treat certain disorders like hypoactive sexual dysfunction disorder Ooh. for women. Okay, and that's not just low libido. That's not just low libido. Mm. So this can't be, oh my gosh, I'm just so tired, I've been taking care of the kids, the only thing I wanna do is go to sleep at night. Okay. Uh -huh. One of the biggest questions I ask my patients before, you know, in terms of evaluating them for libido is, does your libido get better when you're on vacation? Oh. Because if it does, then it might be just the environmental surroundings that you have that are depressing your libido. Okay. Hypoactive sexual dysfunction disorder is a true disorder which has two components to it. The first one is that it is just a lack of desire. You don't have sexual fantasies. You're not attracted sexually to your partner, although you're close and intimate mm -hmm. with your partner. That's the first part. The second part, which is probably the key, is it actually causes psychological distress. This Ooh. can't be, I would rather just be going to bed. Yeah. This is this is causing me angst. This is causing issues to my relationship with my partner. Oh. And that's the difference. Okay, so there's not like a normal like threshold of, of how many times you're having intimacy or anything like that. There isn't. I mean, studies have shown that it doesn't need to be every single day. Okay. And that actually once a week is actually a good threshold for good libido for women and for men okay. and creating happy relationships. Mm, okay. So, yes, if you're having more, that's great. There is an adage of use it or you lose it. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. it also is something where women don't need to be putting as much pressure mm. on themselves to realize they can still be intimate with their partner in different ways besides just through sexual performance. Mm. And also you point out with this testosterone, it's for women that are perimenopausal and menopausal? That's correct. So the North American Menopause Society came out with their pearls just this month talking about testosterone in the use of hyposexual dysfunction disorder. And it really is geared towards the postmenopausal woman and the perimenopausal mm. woman because this is when our testosterone levels, which come from our ovaries, starts to decrease. Mm. I mean, and women don't even, we don't have enough literature or, or studies out there about any of this. Like, I don't, it took me, Recently, I just learned what perimenopausal meant. I didn't know what that meant, you know? It's like, and, and it's like men have had Viagra for decades and women don't have anything to help. It's such inequity here. There is such inequity and we're finally starting to talk about these things in the open, in the media, mm, yes. with our friends. Most importantly, your OBGYN should mm. be talking to you about this. It ah. should be a question that they are asking yeah. you. How is your libido? And recognizing that it is a medical condition when we have um, mm. hyposexual dysfunction disorder and there are steps that can be taken, whether it's medical or whether it's modifying yeah. the environment around us. Okay, so let's talk about the younger women who may be experiencing this. So testosterone may not be for them. What can you do yes. for them? Yes. So there are some new medications that are on the market. Febacerin is one that's out there. Lots of side effects, so it really has to be geared to an individual and closely monitored. Okay. But setting goals for sexual activity during the month, uh -huh. recognizing that it doesn't have to be just sex, but as I talked about intimacy, create date night. You know, mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't create date nights which allow us to actually feel connected to our partner. Um, in terms of setting goals that, hey, this month we're going to have sex yeah. at least four times this month. It makes it, so it, let's say it's May, April 1st is coming up. If April 20th comes around and you've, we've only been intimate <laughs> once, hey, it starts to make it top of yeah, mind, right? Okay. right? Half the time we can create our meetings, we have the kids, we have all these other responsibilities for us but we're not thinking about the health of ourselves and our relationship yeah. with our partner. I love this comment. A lot of my friends, mid-30s to mid-40s, are not uh, not doing the do I right now. I'm just telling you. <laughs> okay, thanks, All Dr. Right, Dr. V. Dr. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> the information for Northwestern Specialist for Women is there on your screen. 
uh, social media handles as well as the website, nswobgyn.com. All right. Thank you, Dr. B. Thank you.